Let us all pray silently, meditating on God's word. Almighty Father, this hour help us to receive help. Help us to receive, help us to become and live as a blessed person, giving benefit to others. Father, you said we can only do it through your grace. All we need to do is just to confess our sins. Help us to only be obedient to your will. Father, this hour, we bring heavy burden this hour. Father, you said to give you all of our heavy burden. Help us to give you all over heavy, help us give over all of our heavy burden and only live in happiness. We believe that miracles will happen. All of our wishes, Father, you told us to receive answers. Help us to only be witnesses for that. This, this hour, help us to sharpen our sharpen each other and, and live a life that will be pleasing to you. All this we pray in Jesus' name, giving thanks and, and blessings. Amen. Mystery of God doing forced repentance is becoming a blessed person. Let's look up 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14. Everybody says that they love being a blessed person, but you do, you do it and then you don't do it. I don't know how merciful God will be, but you have received ancestors' transgressions and you keep betraying. How do you know if you betray or not? But the Word of God teaches us what we sinned or not. And then when I see you, you say the will of God, will of God. But what is will of God? That's giving thanks. That's forced at repentance. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. So I don't know how being thankful for everything. But as we live our lives, there are more, more people to hate than to be thankful. That's worldly logic. But when you have demons inside and you're looking at the world and that person you want to kill, this person you want to kill, there's nobody that's worth, worthy to be a, a real human. What is so funny is that when grandfather and the grandson goes to a bathhouse, the bathhouse, the, the grandson really respects the grandfather and the grandfather goes into the hot tub and, and he says, oh, these feel so good. And the grand, grandson goes into the hot hot tub and says, oh, it's so hot. I can't even believe my, trust my grandfather. There's no one that you can trust in the world. Micah chapter seven, verse five, there's only God that you can trust. People say they get betrayed by people that they, they trust all the time. All that person you're doing a business partner with, but when you turn around, he has already took all the money. That's how life is. It's all according to the Bible. That's why in South Korea and all over the world, look at what's happening in their life. And that is why there's Proverbs all over the world. Everything they say is below, beneath the wisdom. Proverbs 16, verse 16. What is more precious than gold is wisdom. So worldly Proverbs, how can that be? Any, any precious. Why do people want to go on tours? Tours because they say there's there's something to see. Why there is like gold and there's silver and other things to watch. But if you say you did it, then it becomes yours. That's why if you go to the museums in in England, I've been there. There's so many there there's so many crowns there crowns with all the gold and all those diamonds. I said, that's mine. Why? Because it, if you do force your opinions, everything belongs to you. This is the problem. When I do a testing, you say you're okay here, but when I test you over there, that's not okay. So when I test, when I test by giving you a word, then you can tell where problems are. This is where calamity can be changed into blessings. Where you are the most joyful, that is the will of God. What you do, why is the, the, the ambassador that the long time ago that King actually sent him out? He, he sent him out as being like a beggar. 
And because that's his, because that's his his job to pretend like he's a beggar so that he can be, he can be eyes and ears for the king. But but we have to be like Jesus. We have to be at the lowest level. Just like the net. What is the what is the the smallest or the that there's a drag net that will catch everything from the bottom up. What kind of net is that? When the net goes all the way to the bottom and then catches everything from the bottom and the very bottom, there's crabs. There's all kinds of crabs. There's like eight, eight leg crabs. Starting with the eggs, starting with the crabs, it, it catches everything. That's called a drag net. Then it catches everything. So you say it, it catches everything. So then what's going to happen with the natural natural elements? But what God gives, he gives you everything from the bottom to the up. That means if you want to receive that blessing, you have to go all the way down to becoming a servant. Everybody wants to bl receive blessings from bottom up. But when, I, when he tells you to become a servant, you say, oh, no, I don't want to be. What God's telling you is take all the blessings. After you become a, a servant, everybody likes a servant that will help you. Everybody even pays them to to serve as a servant, right? But if you don't have to, if you don't have to pay them, but they're being a servant, then everybody will like them. So if you live where everybody likes you, then is that person going to be successful or is he going to fail? So that's what when Jesus came to Earth, Matthew twenty verse twenty six twenty eight, he said, "Be a servant and be and serve." So those of you who are not successful, you're being arrogant on your own. And that is why people next to you, they, they don't help you. That's why you don't have any luck with people. You don't receive help from anybody. Look at the people around you who are not successful. Your ancestors, transgressions, you're full of it. You're so arrogant. When you're so arrogant, the side effect is that you're you fight with other people next to you. You don't you don't you're not thankful for all things. So then you're not thankful. So what does that mean? That means that you and your neighbor have bad relationship. So when you have a bad relationship, oh that jerk, that means you're a jerk too. Why? Because you're sane. And that's why you ruin your own life. Not only yourself, but you're ruining to third and fourth generation. So you've done you've done it to yourself. On TV, look at the famous Professors, they come out on TV. They say, "Oh, we're very, we're all very smart. That's why we all have our own, own thoughts. That's why we we have we argue with each other." You know what? He's saying that he's a he's a dog. It's because you're arrogant and you're you have prideful, and because you want to die before God and the third and fourth generation, you want you're killing your descendants. That's why you don't love your neighbor as yourself. Total opposite of God's truth. How can he say that on TV in this time and age? What's he saying? That he's just saying how di how different we are, how wrong we are, and yet they don't even know that they're wrong. Only the Word of God tells us the truth. You and your spouse, why do you fight? It's because you're not you're not servants. Just be a servant. There's not there's no reason for you to fight. I don't look at anybody else. I'm looking at my own family, my wife. When I look at my wife, when I look at her, whether she farts, she's still beautiful to my eyes. Whether she's yawning, she's beautiful. When you give thanks for everything, then that means that you're right. But oh, why is she like that? When you're like that, that, that person's not wrong. You're the wrong person. Titus chapter 1, verse 15, you're crooked. So if you don't love, know how to love your neighbor, then you're killing yourself. That's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28. But if you look at all those people who are arrogant, they're killing their wives. They're killing themselves, and they think, how foolish are they killing themselves, thinking they'll be successful? When you say it's not working out for you, every verse of these is, is, is a sermon itself. Almighty God, after you have Almighty God in your heart, then all these blessings will come to you. We don't have time to, to give sermons on every single one. We only have time for three sermons a day. And that's why when I give you a verse of here and there, that means you should know in that verse there's all the blessings. 
That's why even if you look at that person, that you're, you don't even know how to eat that verse, but you're throwing that away. This verse, this word is a, is a spiritual food. If you don't eat it correctly, you're gonna you're gonna die. So if you die, if you eat it without repenting, this word will make you go crazy. And yet you don't know that you go to church, and you and without repentance, you listen to crazy sermons. That's why even pastors wishes the sermon should be short, and even the lay people want the sermons to be short. That's why Jesus. When he gave the sermon, there wasn't any prayer. There wasn't any praising. He only shared the word of God. This is the only way for us to live. Look at the four books of the first New Testament. But only the fakes. They were being hypocritical. And so then they have time for prayer, time for praise. The reason why we don't do well is that according to the Bible, we're wrong. This, the word is our spiritual food. That's why we, we're we sharing the word of God. But if you don't repent, then this word will kill you and kill others. That's Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. So everyone, this dawn, let's change our fate. But what did God tell us? God said, I will help you at this dawn. What do we find? What, what do we look up? First Peter chapter 4, verse 14. Becoming a blessed person. So then this... This dawn, God said he will help you to become this dawn, to become a blessed person. All day long today, problems continue to arise. But when continue problems continue to arise, you say, oh, you're so unlucky. But those who have experienced a lot of problems, they, they are very, very experienced. Just like, a, just like a, the worm. The worm always goes side to side. It doesn't go straight. Just like the test, large test, intestinals, it's it's all crooked. It's like a mudfish. It doesn't go straight, but it goes side to side. That's why in the world, when you refer to a bad person, you say, "Oh, that person's a a mudfish." How do you catch it? With only with salt. What is salt and light? It's Matthew five verse thirteen. That's Christ. In the world, oh, that person is is such. It's always cricket. But when you look at that person, that person when he dies, he person's in a really bad state. That's a promise from God. But even those people, when they do force repentance, all when they were so sick, all the all the pain God takes away. If there's any cancer patients here or whether you you have household members that have cancer patients, if you do force your repentance, you'll receive in Christ, you'll receive grace. When you receive grace, then Lord will help you. Almighty, Almighty Lord will help you. If He's Almighty and He can't heal you, then He's not Almighty. And that's why within your household members, when they continue to do force your repentance, they'll be all healed. Cancer patients, they say it's the most Pain, painful. I, I haven't experienced, but that's what I hear. If somebody in your household is in total pain, just tell them better than better than the medication pain medicine. This is better. And that you're not passing it down to third and fourth generation, that pain and, and that they're own, that they will die with painful death. But if you do force your pencil, let's get rid of all the pain. And if you do it together, just try that. If you do it properly, Whenever hospitals I go, even those who don't really, if they don't even, if they're not even Christians, but they say, please pray for me, and I pray for them, their pain stops right away because he's Almighty God. Even medication wouldn't heal them, but prayer will. Let's all receive that help today. Why haven't you known this before? Because of all the fakes that didn't know Christ. They will take your spirit to hell. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Sure, everybody says, believe in Jesus, believe and go to heaven, but you haven't heard about the mystery of Christ. So then you and me, why, do we, why did God say to spread the mystery of Christ? Because of only the mystery of Christ can totally make us perfect. Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. This one verse 
based on this one verse, can, we can give you a sermon on to that last couple year, couple hours. But God is telling us by giving you this one verse, let's just receive all these blessings. We're here to receive all these blessings. Amen. And that is why for 100 hours or 1,000 hours of sermon, you can eat it all in one hour. How? Because he's Almighty God. And that's why Matthew 10, verse 20, this mouth, when you receive the Holy Spirit and cast the demons away, the Lord will use your lips, but otherwise you're doing it yourself. You have to write it down and you have to memorize it or you're fake. Matthew chapter 10, verse 20. So be able to discern properly. So word of God, has it ever hurt us? You have done wrong and that you have ruined your own life and that and you've ruined the, even the country. But God said he will save you. He will still make you blessed. This is the hour right now. Me and my children and our country for us to live. Amen. If you look when you live according to the world, look at those who are who are older, even if you're 70 or 80 years old, from your parents or from your Neighbors, I'm sure you've all heard what they have to say. Oh, that person or that household, there's always one blessed person in every household. What's really interesting is that he's, he's really young. He's like in 40s or 50. That person comes out on TV and listen to what they say. They only say, oh, life as you live your life, there's three chances, they say. But the last chance is when you die, so it has not, it doesn't have not, nothing to do with you. But when you live your life, there's two chances. He himself has an experience. He said, that's what I hear. Because he hasn't experienced it himself. And this is what their so-called famous people say. And, and people listen to that. It's really pathetic. But today, this blessed person, during one day, millions of times, if you do force your apprentice, you'll become a blessed person. You'll change your life. You'll change your destiny. You'll change your life. And you're here to receive this blessing. So in your life, what there's only two or three chances in your, all your life, and you're watching that person, and you listen to that, and you want to live like that? And that's why those people who are older, they only drink. Why? Because, oh, now I'm 60 years old. I've lost all my chances and, and I've, given, I've given up life. But Almighty God is saying, Moses started at 80 years, 80 years old to 120 years old. And that's why chances in just one day, millions chances come. Force your pension when you that your chances are there. Your life will change. Your chance to change your day, your life will come. This is a chance for you to live. Every, everybody. Why can't you use this promise? Take this promise. Isn't it frustrating for you? This is blessings for you. But in the world, there's no eight blessings. There's only five blessings in, in the world. Why? Because there's five colors. That's why. So don't think about the gambling, the five blessings. No. Almighty God, when you say it doesn't work, he will make it work. That's why he's almighty. It's just when you look at someone, oh, he's an alcoholic or he's actually worldly. He's all ruined, but Almighty God is saying He can still be blessed. You can be blessed. I can be blessed. Everybody. It can happen for everybody. That is hope. Christ is hope. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. The Word of God is my spiritual food, is your spiritual food. But what is the spiritual food? You eat it and you don't have a stomach, okay? When you eat it, you will live. But look at those people who are not blessed. Those who paid money to to become a they they had they're educated they're stuck stuck with demons. But look at any country that are ruined. Who ruined the country? They are the educated people. They are all educated. They ruined the country. That's why God said those people I will make them shame shameful. Even the countries that use those people. That's what's happening to all the countries around the world that are being ruined. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 19 and 20. I didn't make it up. This word of God. Even those people, they can be blessed. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14. Ready, go. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, because the spirit of glory and the spirit of God rest upon you. Amen. 
Let's change starting now, today. So then when you change into a blessed person, that is the will of God. It can happen any time. The will of God that's giving thanks every in all things. Giving thanks in all things. Let's look up 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Of a pastor park, which path are you going? I don't know. I'm being led myself. I'm being led by myself. I'm not, le I'm not leading myself. I'm not the owner. Who's our helper? Who's your helper? Now you know. And that is why today, when, how, when are we going to have time to, sh to cover all the Lord? Lord is our helper side. Christ's side is repentance. And that's why, because your sins, it doesn't work through the blood of Christ. When you repent, then you're going to receive grace. And when you receive grace, you become God's son. And when you become God's son, then Lord is your helper. And Christ and Lord, are they different or are they the same? They're the same, but they do different things. They're different. But through Christ, you receive grace. And when you receive help and you, re and you change, your, change your fate, and God will... And you become God's son, and he'll be your helper as the Lord. And what is the connection? It's thanksgiving, because that is the will of God. Now, now you know, now you understand. So some, some person say, oh, now I know. Over there. And it'll still work out for you, but the person next to him. You can, you can still be blessed, because he's Almighty God. As long as you're sitting here, where the bean sprouts are, and the and you water it. Then the bean sprout from Kangwon Province says to the Chala Province, "Do you want to become a bean sprout? I don't. I'm not going to become a blessed. I'm not going to become, and you're not becoming. As so you don't want to become a bean sprout, because I I've been dried for a year. All different types of beans come, and they and they're talking to each other, and the owner pours water on them." Just like the water from, from the mountain. So he turns around, he turns around, and then he's... And then he turns to the next... And you don't see? You don't see the, the bean from Kangwon, but you see the, the bean from Chala province, but the owner just came, continues to pour water on them. Every hour it's poured water. And then it becomes sprouting. It starts sprouting. Amen. And that's what Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. If you go to a prophet church, then you'll change your life. You'll become a blessed person. And even if you talk to each other, Romans chapter 1, verse 29, those who grumble, those that don't have God in their hearts, they all start sprouting and they all become blessed people. This is what a church is. This is where you go and you be, and you change your 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 fate. Before you came and you leave, but you have all kinds of wealth, and then you and then you go home and 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 you don't have any any blessings. All you have is just worries. All the worries are. But now, today, you put an end to that. Only take blessings with you. Only take blessings with you. Only take blessings with you. Only take this spiritual power this time. The will of God. Let's read together. Ready? Go. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus to you, to your word. Amen. Whatever, whatever it is, give thanks. But those who have problems right now, in small things, you're stuck, but if you realize it, then you're a blessed person. In the beginning, the Lord, when you're worried and you fall, and he, His heart, He will give you according to your sin. He doesn't give it to you. In that household between the spouse, if you hit that person and give a problems to that person, then that both spouses will become really surprised. And then they, they'll run towards God's side to give thanksgiving. Almighty God knows inside everything in that household. Or in that household, that second child, or the third child, or the first child. If I hit that child, then the, the, the spouses will become to their senses. And he hits that child. How much? 
according to how much the ancestors and you have sinned. This is the just, justice, justice God. It says 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. Then the parents, they realize in Psalms 49, verse 20, and they become a, a true human, and, and if they come before God, then they'll, they'll live. What? Did the ch- Chosu did that? Just because they know the laws and they go over there and they torment others, they don't go towards God, but they go towards world, the world. And God says, how come he's not coming towards me? Like Amos chapter 4, verse 6 through 10. I gave him that rebuke so he can come to me, but he goes to the world. So then after that, then God will hit that person himself. When he takes the money from that person, they don't even blink their eye. Then when I give him sickness, then he will come to his senses. Deuteronomy 28, verse 23, 22. Where are you caught on? What, you have worries? But nothing big has come to you? Don't mistake yourself. But the person next to you that you don't like, then you are going towards problems because you don't have the will of God, thanksgiving, you're not being thankful in all things, then you're, already, you're going towards problems, but you're not realizing. That's Proverbs 4, verse 19. You are just like an animal. You're wicked. And you, when you have problems, you still don't realize. This is how God is teaching you, telling you right now, through the Word, so that you can realize, so you can become a blessed person. So then why are you stuck right now? What are you caught on? The will of God and give thanksgiving in all things. Are you doing that? What? You're not being thankful in all things? So until you give thanksgiving, God will make you suffer. That's Numbers chapter 14, verse 11. God will make you suffer until you give thanksgiving. Because this is the will of God. So this is the will of God. Is it to kill you or is it to make you alive? He will save you and then to give you 10,000 generations blessings so you can do better and better. So you can do all good things to the world, to the to your country, to receive that blessing. That is the life of faith. The, the side effect is that you give amen. The will of God is to give thanks in all things. In all things, give thanksgiving. This is the will of God. So then, what you're arguing here is that will of God? They have demons inside, and they're arguing. And even those who are sitting there and listening, even that church will go to hell. First, Second Timothy chapter two, verse fourteen. If those people who argue, those fake churches, oh, but you didn't argue, but you just sitting next to them. Even those people will go to hell. That's Second Timothy chapter two, verse fourteen. This is how he God hates arguments. Why? Because you belong to the flesh, and you're hundred percent going to hell. Second, First Corinthians chapter three, verse three. If you argue, even those who listen to the arguments, they go to hell. So if you're not giving thanks in all things, is it going to work for you? No. And that's why you and the will of God are not the same. So until you are right to the will of God, God will make you suffer. So if you are obedient right away, then that will end. So what kind of obedience is that? Today, you and me, within this word, in all things, if you don't give thanksgiving, then you're going to be faced with calamity. You and your children, you're not going to do well. Tomorrow, it will be even worse. Why? Because God will give you bigger and bigger problems. And that's why, to us, the first thing God takes away is money. Those of you who are poor here, that means that God has hit you first. God will take money from you. When God takes money and you don't realize, then God will take, give you sickness. That's why you have diseases. So then you say, oh, this household, not only are we poor, but now we have sickness. Oh, what kind of, well, how come I have so many cal- calamities? And yet you don't realize the sins. Oh, I met the wrong person. That's why when I was, before I, I married you, I was blessed. What kind of blessing are you talking about? That when you got married, the blessings went away. There's only one type of blessings. That is from God. Otherwise, that is not blessings. Just because the, the person whose death sentence, they, they feed you today, but he's going to be hung day after tomorrow, that is not blessings. Just because you're eating meat today, that is not blessings. Only God gives you blessings. Only when you do force your repentance, only Christ, those people will be blessed. First Peter chapter 4, verse 14, we read it. God wants to give you these blessings to those people 
what will follow that person. First Peter chapter 4, verse 14. What follows to the... the let's read it one more time. First Peter chapter 4, verse 14. To all of you, when, ble are, when blessings come, there's somebody who's always had, who are very jealous. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Those who have demons inside, they will reproach you. They will say bad things about you. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. They're the doom. They always slander you. And that's why when you become a blessed person, that's why you're always reproached. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. So if you're not reproached, then you're not a blessed person. You're an unlucky person. So why why are you be, why are you reproached when you become a blessed person? So you can know between the between right and wrong, between the real and the fake. If this is a true place, so then I'm sure before you came, the demons inside you didn't want to come here. But now that you're here, now now that you listen to the sermon, now it's so good. So then the household will the the people. Your household people, they're going to be reproaching you. All those people will, will reproach you. That's why God said, those who actually say bad things about you, you're a blessed person. When you're reproached, you're a blessed person. Do you know why? John 15 verse 19. Because those with demons inside, they're headed for hell. They belong to the. They belong to something else. That's why. But now that you have changed your belonging to that God, that's why they have a stomachache and they're jealous. And John chapter fifteen verse nineteen. You did force repentance and you're not reproached. I'm sorry, but you only did it with your head. You didn't do it with your heart. But if you do it with your heart, right away miracles will happen. At the same time, demons will reproach you. In South Korea, there's a saying, when your cousins buy land, you get a stomachache. So then, those who, who are not even related to you, if they, if, they buy, if they buy land, then you even have a headache. Those of you here, why do you have a headache? Because you're, you're stuck with money, that's why. You're hung up with money. Oh, those, those jerks, when they were young, they, we used to feed them. But now, look how well they've done. I've, I have such a stomachache. I'm so jealous. When did they ever become? And then you get a headache. You have worries. Even if you have one in your heart, you have a stomachache. And you, you have a headache. Then you have worries in your... Then you have 10,000 worries. Your life, you're, you're living it that wrongly. But if you are reproached and those with demons, they get a stomachache, they're jealous and, and they, they reproach you, but they will come to you asking for money. But if you help them, then they'll say, oh, surely they are different. They're total, we're totally different. Why do we have to pay more taxes? And those that God has hit and those who are stuck with poverty that we have to help them. But if you help them, then those who help them, they'll also be doomed together. Isaiah 31 verse 2 and 3. That's why United States, they're helping everybody with, with benefits. But over time, look what's happening to your United States. They're going to be, they're losing they're getting less and less rich. Look what's happening in Europe. Look at look at what's happening with all the giving benefits to all the people. Social security they've been giving for thousands, hundreds of years. Now they're faced with poverty. Why? Because everybody, they don't want to... Look at the citizens. They don't want to work anymore. They just want to sit back and just receive benefits, receive social security. And they become alcoholics and they become drug addicts. God is hit. If God hits the people with poverty and you help them and you're blocking God, God's way, then how should you help them? You have to help them by becoming a blessed person. That's why the only thing for you to evangelize is the mystery of Christ. Then you'll receive true blessings. True blessings. You'll become a blessed person and receive true blessings. And that's why don't give them fish, but you have to teach them how to catch fish. That means that you don't know. They don't know. So today you're here. 
receiving hundred thousand dollars that is not more, more that is not important but taking more than that by receiving blessings in front of you that's what you want so if you can take all as much blessings as you want exodus chapter 34 verse 7 then your children 10,000 generations will receive blessings we're here to receive these blessings that's why life of faith at true church that is really a real blessing what do you do when you when you receive when you receive blessings you're being cursed by those who are doomed, by those who have demons inside, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4 is recorded there. Why do they curse you? Because, they, because they're jealous that you're doing well. That's John chapter 15, verse 19. But those curses, they're not doing it to you. It looks like they're cursing you and, and they're, they're slandering you. But that, they're not doing it to John chapter 15, verse 18. They did it to Almighty God. But who received the blessings? Who gives you these blessings? When you do forced repentance, you become a blessed person. And so when you do forced repentance in Christ, you become a blessed person. Who gives you these blessings? Almighty God. But who curses you receiving these blessings? God will not leave them alone. That's why John 15, verse 18, those who curse you and those who slander you, they called you a heresy. They didn't do it to you, so do not worry. They did it to God. So God will take care of them himself. That's why if you slander other people, calling them heresy, just watch, wait and watch them, what happens to them. They'll be, they're going to be ruined because God himself will ruin them. John, Romans chapter 12, verse 19. How do you want to live your life? You have to become a blessed person. Amen? So to become this blessed person, you say amen, I say amen. But not too many people say amen. Why doesn't amen come out? Because you're not a blessed person yet. Because you're not correct with God. That's why in your household, you have problems. In your life, you have this heavy burden. Nothing is working out. But today, let us, let us eat our true food. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. If I just give you these, then you don't really know. You don't really know the order. You don't know what comes first. You don't know what comes last. This is your spiritual food. This is your spiritual food. If you don't eat it, you're going to die. But if you eat it, you'll live. What you think, something works, and then it doesn't work. Something works, it doesn't work. If something works, First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, you say, oh, you did it, and you stand up, and you live, and you sit like this. That's why the animal before the animal behind you is waiting to take you away. If you say you did it, you're going to if you if you stand up on your own, then you're going to be doomed. Well, when do you stand up? When you say I did it, I did it. It's hundred percent His grace. You didn't do it on your own. If you do it on your own, you're going to be doomed. So look what's happening to the the Korean conglomerates. They say, I did it, I did it, and look at them getting ruined. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. It's not belonging to them. Oh, when you look at that person, look at how he's acting. He's going to be ruined. First Peter chapter 1, verse 20. That's what's going to happen. And because I know, that's why true pastor who's standing here before you, aha, oh, that person's going to die today. If you're living, it's okay for you not to eat one meal. But that person who's going to die, Luke chapter 19, verse 10, that lost sheep, that's why the sermon is going out to save that person. That's why I keep throwing out, throwing out the verses. So if that person gets scared when this, or doesn't say I'm into this verse, aha, it's because of this. That because of calamity, that household will, will get into an accident and will die. If you don't say amen, that is a problem. That is a problem where that verse is, that you have to block that. This is a promise from God. So how do you decide what sermon you're going to give? Almighty God, you do whatever He tells you to do. Here I'm standing from doing, from not working to, to, to making it work for that lost sheep, to save that sheep. That is what a church is supposed to do. So then how can you prepare it ahead of time and you give that? Then you're saying, God, move away. I'm going to do it. What? You're greater than God? How can it work? Come to your senses. And that's why Jesus' disciples, they didn't prepare ahead. Because God gives the most essential. If you all have a stomachache, 
If you get a bandage on your head, what's that going to do? That medicine is not going to work. The, medicine's only, the medicine only works when it works. The answer is when it works, that's a true answer. When the problems change into blessings, that's a true medicine. That is a true church. This is what we're happening. This is what we're eating at this revival. Today, it is going to work. Let's read together. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. Ready, go. For how many soever be the promises of God, in him is the ye. Therefore also through him is the Amen, unto the glory of God through us. Amen. Why doesn't Amen come out? In, you have to go in Christ for Amen to come out. This is recorded by God. What is going inside Christ? That is Mr. God, Mr. Christ, force of repentance. When you go inside Christ, then from unlucky, from those who are sick, those who are in poverty, when it doesn't work for you and your children aren't working, you're full of worries, and the more you live, you have more tormented. When you go inside Christ, you become a blessed person, and your, and your fate will change. When this person... This person can say Amen. That's what's recorded here. That's why if you don't say Amen, the 66 books of the Bible, all of His promise, they have nothing to do with you. But when you say Amen, this promise, this God's promise, will become yours. 10,000 generations will do well. Starting today, the pro all the problems will end. This is how, this, is, this will work through Amen. Amen. Let's read it one more time. Ready, go. For how many soever be the promises of God, in him is the ye. Wherefore also through him is the Amen, unto the glory of God through us. Amen. So all of you, even though you live right next to church, there are people who don't have a life of faith. They're very smart because they don't give, they don't go to fake churches. But even though there is a mystery of God, there is forced repentance in this church, and if you don't go to that church, then you are really doomed. Where do you say Amen? In where? In Christ. You say Amen. When you say yeah, 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 when you say yes, then what happens? You will give glory to God. What is giving glory to God? When you go to church, you talk about glory, glory. That is a that is a command from God. Whether you whether you eat or you sleep or whether you live or you die, what you need to do is give glory to God. That's First Corinthians chapter ten verse thirty one. Yes, that is a command from God. So why what is glory, glory? But when you go inside Christ, you say Amen, and you become a person who can give glory to God. And then God did say, give glory to God. So what does that mean? Let's read it one more time. First, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. Ready, go. For how many soever be the promises of God, in him is the ye. Wherefore also through him is the Amen, unto the glory of God through us. Amen. The, in the 66 books of the Bible, this incredible promise of salvation, and all the way from salvation to being healed, and your children become filial, and also your face reading changing, from calamity to blessings, and from your, your faith changing in Christ, it all becomes yours. We are here to receive this blessing. Six books of the Bible, all of the promise to become ours. Amen. Amen. Everybody, the six books, this promise, how do you become yours? Only through Amen. So then this Amen, what is, what is the true Amen? When you do force your repentance, when you receive grace in Christ, when you say Amen, that's a true Amen. Only that person gives what to God? Let's look up 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31. If you don't give glory to God, you, you'll go to hell. If you, don't, if you don't give glory to God, you, you'll go to hell. You say, you do life of faith, but you don't know what giving glory is. Which demon is lying to you, saying that if you don't give glory, you still go to heaven? No. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, you have to give glory to God to go to heaven. What is that? What is giving glory? Giving glory to God. Only you can do that in Christ. When you go in Christ, you, can say, you will say amen. And when you, go, when you say amen, then you will receive blessings according to the word. What kind of blessings? You will give glory to God. That kind of blessings. Today, God is saying, when you, if you want to live as true human, 
Then you, then you give glory to God. Amen? God is saying that you have to live according to human. That's why God said give glory to God. So then if you eat, when you eat, you don't give glory. And you drink and you don't give glory to God. So you, you eat three times a day or more than that. But today God is saying whether you eat or whether you drink, it doesn't matter. You give glory to God. Do good deeds to others. Who is a respectful person? That person gives a lot of benefit to others. That's why today, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31, that is God's command is, is do good deeds to others. When, you, when you're when highly educated because you can do good deeds, right, to others, that's giving glory to God, doing good deeds. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31. Let's read it. Ready, go. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. You and me, whether you eat or whether you drink, only for yourself, so is that person a human or an animal? Everybody says that that's an animal. They, those who live because they want to eat. But in order for you to do good deeds and you eat, then that's a true person. And yet you say, Nobody, nobody gives glory to God because they don't know. Because God is not leading that person. So what does it mean to give glory to God? Whether you eat or whether you drink, where, what, anytime give glory to God? That's verse 33. Verse 32 is those who get in the way, they're full of demons, come to your senses. And verse 33 is giving glory to God. Today, Becoming a blessed person, becoming a person to give glory to God. First, first your, your fate will change. And then your children, your household will do well. Your descendants will do well. You will do well and you can help others. You have to do well so you can help others. You have to do well so you can help others. So that that is giving glory to God. Verse 33. Ready, go. Give no occasion of stump. Even as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of the many, that they may be saved. Amen. Here, it doesn't say to only to humans. It says all things, whatever, in all things, to anybody, to all people, in all things that you do, those who are, who are being tormented by those bad things, to help that person become joyful. This is where you do it. When you bring problems here, this past apart, to give glory to God. If I have received, if he has received that, if he, through forced repentance, through mystery of Christ, if I have received that first, all the worries and all the torment that you, you're being tormented by, whether problems or what happens to you, to all the people, have to change that to, change that to happiness. That's giving glory to God. So you have to live like this. To you and your children, you have to live like this. You have to live like this. That's giving glory to God. But everybody says give glory to God, give glory. But in all your things, but the people who slander you and you slander other people by saying they're, they're heresy. And when you're stuck on that and you're being doomed this way or that way, you think that's giving glory to God? Where did you learn that? In all things, to all people, you have to make that person joyful. You're paying a lot of money, and you go and watch opera, or you, or you go watch a musical, or, or some kind of show, or you're going to go watch circus. What does that mean? Because you want to be joyful. You want to be happy. That's why you go there. So then you pay so much money to, or pay $1,000 for that seat, but are you really happy after that? St. Paul is where it's so, in the bottom of the jail, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, he said, be joyful. I say again, be joyful, he said. Oh, St. Paul, is he crazy? But after I realized that that's giving glory to God. So how how you do that? Because even if you're in the sitting in a bad place, 
You can you can have joy because when you do force your friends, God will give you joy. Receiving all the joy, that's giving glory to God. Today, let's be let's be joyful. Today, we have to receive this. Only that person will be joyful. Not only, not only if you're joyful and and the problems aren't being re resolved, then you're not happy anymore. The problems have to change into answers. You have to do better and better. You have to be, it has to be beneficial. It has to be beneficial. That's why you're sitting here. And because it's beneficial for you, that's why you're here. And for me, if it's not beneficial, I'm smarter than you. I wouldn't be here. I'll say, bye-bye, I'm going to leave. No, this is real here. As much as you love him, Proverbs 8, verse, 40, 8, verse 17, as much as you love God, God will bless you with everything, all the blessings and money. He will fill your treasuries with wealth. Let's all receive these blessings. We have to receive all these blessings and go to heaven and, and receive all the blessings. And that's why we're here today. Say amen. And that's why all of you, when you go to church, you don't have, you, it, because of this incredible blessing, starting with me, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22, starting with you, you have to become a blessed person. Then your household will be blessed. And then you can share with others. That's giving glory to God. Let's read verse 33. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 33. Ready? Go. Even as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of the many that they may be saved. Amen. Amen. So in these days, in church, what is a church? And, and where is a revival like this? Only when you do force of repentance, you go inside Christ. And when you go in Christ, then you and me, we can all, we will all say amen. When you say amen, it is a promise from God. All the, the blessings, the 66 books of the Bible, that you'll be saved. 10,000 generations will do well. You'll be patriotic to the country. And you'll receive blessings to benefit to all others. We're here to receive all these blessings. We're here to receive all these blessings. Amen. And that is why here, even though I am tired here and I'm suffering here, it seems like Psalms 40, verse 20, 29. When you're tired, God will give you this power. So when you receive this power, then you will cast away all the demons in from your household. All the calamity will be cast away and change it all to blessings in your household. And that is why even though you're tired, you're here. I'm sure you're all very, very tired, exhausted. But I, I am very, very exhausted when I receive answers and receive spiritual power. Isaiah 40, verse 29, God said he will give to those who are very tired. Why? We're not talking about tired in the world. But when you do force your repentance and when you go inside Christ, you're very, very exhausted. If you're not tired, what is tired inside you is demons are tired and you cast it away. Whether you prayed one hour or you prayed all night, when you go inside Christ, when you say Amen and you have and you pray, even though your body is tired, but but you're very rejoiceful. And so when the demons are cast out, all the sickness, all the calamity to all of your children, to all your households, the calamity are all cast away. It has all left. It has all left. This is the promise. This is the promise. This incredible six books of the Bible. This blessings, this person, and the person who are in Christ will say, Amen, then that person will receive the blessings because that is the will of God. When you say, Amen, in Christ, you give glory to God. When you give glory to God, this, this Almighty God, when you have Him inside you, then you'll, be, you'll become a person to give glory to God. When you give glory to God, even though, just look at me carefully. Only those with love of God can really look at me and, and think think I am really good looking, but but how how come I'm changed into a blessed person? Ecclesiastes chapter eight verse one. When you do for therapy, your face will change from unlucky, from a dirty looking to a blessed person. And that is why I'm okay to look at. Sure, when you when you first came, I, I couldn't even look at you, but but if there's no manners in the world, but I want to go and, and hug all of you. Hug you so tight that you'll burst. That's, that's how beautiful you all look to me. But when you change, your, your, your spouse who wanted to divorce you will look beautiful in your eyes. 
So yesterday, when Pastor knew for one or two hours she was next to me as I was medicating, when I was looking at her, even when I look at her this way, she's so beautiful. When I look at that way, she looks so beautiful. All around, even when I lie down, she looks pretty, pretty. When I'm sitting, she looks so pretty. Then she said, uh, well, well, why are you looking at me like that? So I said, oh, you're so pretty. Why are you doing that? Oh, you're so beautiful. How beautiful do you think she is? She's 60, 60 years old. Or if she's older than that. Because but when you do force your repentance, it's a new beginning. Force your repentance, Second Corinthians 5 or 17, it's a new beginning. What, your, your wife at home looks so old? because you live with her for 60 years? No, that's a lie. Because today you're meeting her for the first time. How beautiful is she? How beautiful is your, is your husband to your eyes? Because every day that's a new beginning. Today, even 12 times you have a new beginning. This, this. This is getting rid of all the problems in the world. This is how precious it is. There's no more breaking up of families. You may think, oh, how do I live like this? I am so, so joyful. Because if your spouse, who's your helper, if you don't, if she doesn't look beautiful to you, you're killing yourself. Ephesians 5, verse 28. But you're killing yourself? Oh, but Pastor Park, well, how come it's not working out for me? I say, how is, how is your wife? Is your wife so beautiful? But that is the answer to that question. How beautiful is your wife to you? Oh, but Pastor Park, Oh, that wife, sure, outside may look okay, but, but after living with her 40 years, I, I'm so sick of her. No. Every day when I look at her, my wife, she's a new creation because I go inside Christ and I'm a new creation. Everything that I see is a new creation. So how can you look at your wife and say, oh, that's 20, 40 years? Somebody asked me, how long have, we, have I been married? I just met her a, a minute ago. That's how beautiful she is to me. What? Your amen is so weak. You're, yes. You are being honest. But if you're honest, God will bless you. So you are, you are blessed. To those who are honest, you're not going to pass down calamity to your children. You're going to pass down blessings. Starting now, you're going to be blessed. You, it will happen. It'll happen better and better. Better and better. You'll save the world, save your country. Let's finish giving glory to God. Today, your life that gives glory to God, that is the most human-like. In all things, you can give benefit to others. There's only one, there's only one president, right, in the, in the country. But what God gives you, even presidents wants to help others, but he cannot help those who are sick. Only within his power he can help. But in that household, they're, they're being tormented because of demons. He can't help. But all of you today, your household, you can save your household, your children, and all the others. You can help others. You can help other people and give them joyful. Help them by giving and this incredible thing you're going to receive. Oh, Lord, thank you so much. Oh, Lord, thank you. This is giving glory to God. Your children, don't you want your children to live like that? Even starting now, you and your spouse, and don't you want your spouse to live like that? Starting now, your parents, don't you want them to live like that? In all things, you can help others. You can help all people. What, is the president is not included? That's why you just have to pray. Then you're helping the president. That's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. And that is why. It's truly giving glory. What does that mean? You or your spouse and your, your spouse in your household will do so well. And even the problems in other households and other people, whether they're sick and they're being tormented by demons, you can help them by giving them joy, and you can help them by giving them benefit. And in the end, and then they can all go to heaven. That's giving glory. So they can be saved. That's giving glory. Don't you want to live like that? Say amen. Let's, let's receive this blessing at this dawn. That's giving glory to God. Amen.
So then, giving glory, that is God's command. Whether you drink, whether you eat, you have to give glory. What is giving glory? Whatever situation, any country, whether they're a king or whoever, the, any rich person, when you help that person to give in, so that he can be joyful, and then you can give benefit to that person, and through that, and that person can go to heaven, that can be saved, who can be saved, that's giving glory. First, starting with you, that's giving glory. But in South Korea, in the world, how many people are there that give glory? All of you, how come so many people, they stop believing? How come the number of churches keep decreasing? Because there's no benefit for me. There's no joy from going there. There's nothing good that's coming to me. Look at Europe. For 2,000 years, nothing good came to them. And that's why first, in all things to all people, what do you need to give them? Joy. So turn to your neighbor and say, let's only give joy. That's giving glory. So it says to give only joy. So you to turn to your neighbor. You're not joyful yourself. And look at your face. You're all of frown. You're frowning yourself. You have three streaks there. And look at you. Look so unhappy. How can you give joy to others? Between you and your spouse, in which land, which religion, a rich philosopher says that when you get married, you'll, your joy will continue to arise. No, when, you, when two people meet, starting that point on, they keep arguing. You're holding back because of your parents. You're holding back because you have your sibling. You're, you're biting your tongue. You're, you're holding back. You're holding back. And that's why Cham is truly and nobody's happy after they're married. And and religion they say some of the religion they say, you know you know what religion is? That's shackles, your ankle around your ankles. But God is saying it's freedom and fr and joy. It's overflowing with joy. Say amen if you want to receive all that. If you say amen if you want to receive all that. Amen. So then today, this hour of a pastor part, don't say just the, the, with words, but I'm, I'm really thirsty. Right away, right now, it has to work. If you say amen, you give glory to God. Where do you say amen? When you're where? In Christ. In Christ. This Christ, Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. It's a mystery of God. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Come inside me, inside you. When he comes inside us, that's mystery of Christ. And mystery of Christ, force of repentance. In Christ, what comes out? Amen comes out. And when you do that, the six books of the all the promises will come to you. So then... So when, it, when it's all fulfilled to you and me, what do we need to receive so we can live, so I can be joyful, so you can give joy to others? So when you do force your repentance correctly, when does joy come to you? When you do force your repentance, the moment you do that, between you and God, when the relationship was cut, Isaiah 59, verse 1, 2, 3, because of sin, it was cut. But when you're, when you're forgiven of your sins, you and you will hold hands with God. Almighty God, you'll hold hands with Him. So Almighty God, what does He give us? Romans 15, verse 13, He gives you all happiness, all joy. And that's why when you do force your repentance properly, even though you didn't want to be happy, but inside you, the demons are cast out through the blood of Christ when you are cleansed and you don't have any more sin. So whether demons that were attached to the sin, then you're healed. The demons will take all the sickness and are cast out. Luke chapter 4, verse 35. And that's why all of you, when you do force your repentance here, oh, if I knew that, then I should have brought my, my family member who's sick. 
Oh, I should have had the ambulance bring him here. But do not worry. Matthew chapter 8, even those who are left behind, they're healed. Almighty God, because he's almighty. Because he's almighty. He didn't say you have to bring them all here. So then Jesus, then he would have been trampled by all the people. But there is, not, there is nothing like that in the Bible. There isn't. Because even if you le left them at home, they can, be, they can be changed, they can be blessed. Matthew chapter 8, let us all receive this blessing today. Even your household that, you, that are home, they all can be blessed. Today the word of God is telling us, even the household at home, they can be blessed. But how about me right here? But God is saying, when you go inside Christ, right away, you have no more your past. Right this hour, you'll be you'll be a new beginning as a blessed person. Second Corinthians five verse seventeen. You have a new beginning as a blessed person. Not you, but Almighty God will give you all happiness. And that's why, oh, because of this, I'm I'm not happy. No, you're not going to have any of that. Oh, because of that, I cannot be happy. No, none of that. You'll be happy for all things. You have thoroughly repented last night. Oh, but that person, if you repent now, oh Lord, oh, that person has, next to me were so, was so loud, so I didn't like that person. But when you repent that, you'll be forgiven right now. You'll be overflowing with happiness. You'll have happiness right now. All joy. Not only all joy, but all peace. Because he's almighty, all your worries and anxiety, he has taken it all and changed it to all joy. <coughs> and then God will also give you knowledge. I'm sure some of you have experienced it last night. You don't even know what comes to you. That Yeonpyeong, just like that yellow corker went to the Yeonpyeongdo from, went all the way down there. God will give you this knowledge. This knowledge, Proverbs 3, verse 20. Even now, miracles are happening. After you repented, and that knowledge that God gives, miracles will happen. But because you've never done it, and it's the first time, oh, I wonder what this is. What is this? Oh, God, go away. All joy, all peace, when it comes in your heart, that, you just have to do it like this. If you do it like this, for example, some some people want to want to make money, make a lot of money, so we pray together. And Ulsan, there was a there was a new rule that said actually you cannot catch any whale. So then the the ship, the whale whale catching ship, the price went all the way down. So then I was praying, and then God moved my heart to tell that person to buy all that ship. About Pastor Park, why should I buy that? Those who have those ships have all been, they're all ruined. They're all, but I have so much peace in my heart and I'm so joyful. So I don't even know why I'm telling him to buy those ships. So then you're not being obedient. Because you have IQ just like the animal, you're stuck with that. And because you've always lived with the demons, so then. When God, you became a blessed person just now and God is telling you what to do and you're hearing for the first time and you, you don't want to do it. You only want to do it when it's two times two is four, when it's correct by your, by your IQ, by your head. But when you follow what's in your heart, when you're obedient to your heart, that is, miracles will happen. But when you continue to repent, the same thing will come to you, same thing will come to you and afterwards, what demons tell you, the demons are trying to kill you. You'll, you'll know that. And that's why Mr. Kim comes and says, let's actually do a business together. You can see right away with your eyes. You can discern. And then whatever that's in your heart, that's do not do that. But today, when you do this, you'll see with your eyes, then that's what you need to do you'll do well, that you'll be led that way. And that's why in all things, Proverbs 3, verse 6, acknowledge Him and He will lead you in all happiness, all peace will come to you first. And then, and when you give benefit to others, or whatever that you do with somebody, 
So let's say you have this one piece of gold. Oh, Mr. Kim, let's actually have this. Even though you know he's greedy. Uh, Mr. Kim, let's, let's, be, let's actually cut it in half. And then you tell him to cut it. And then you tell him, take your half first. Then the greedy Mr. Kim, he's looking at it and you're looking at it. And he, he takes a little more because it's more on this side. And then he cuts it. He cuts it in half. According to the ruler, he doesn't even look at the part. Mr. Kim, just take... Just take what you want to take. Then he says, okay, should I take first? Then he takes it. He takes the bigger piece. So then I'm, I'm left with a smaller piece, but you still have. And that's why God said, only give benefit to others. So when you do this, then after that, you will not fight. Hey, you jerk. When I wasn't here, you made your piece bigger. You're, you're being calculative. You're being so smart. You took 100 more and you're fighting and you're being so calculative and you think that you give benefit to others. Why did God say give benefit to others? Why did God say to give joy and, and benefit to others? If you truly are, then, then, then if you're giving benefit to others, then why is your business not doing well? Your church is not doing well. That means that you didn't give benefit. But if you give benefit, then I'm going to be doomed. You think that God said that if you give benefit to others, do you think that so that God told you to do that so you'll be doomed? No. When you give benefit to others give, and you give glory to God, but, but you're losing out, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8, that's why the Lord said, I will help you. He will follow you to help you. Just give benefit to others. Starting today, just live that way. According to the word of God. Amen. So then, what? Is there any reason to give them demonstration? Is there any reason to fight? Romans chapter 8, verse 28. If you truly love God, if you really did force your repentance, the will of God, then nothing, you will not lose out. You just sit there and God will do it for you. If you live that way, then you'll be doomed. Is there anybody that lived that way that was doomed? Starting today, live that way and see what happens. The problems that you bring, it's because you, you're trying to be smart and you're being so calculative. Ah, what, that person took one hundredth of my gold? You're being so calculative and you're being so smart, but please stop being living with your IQ like an animal, but live according to word of God. Word of God. Oh, Mr. Kim, just take what you want to take first. If he takes a bigger piece, just take a little bit of yours even and give it to him. That wicked, that evil Mr. Kim, wherever he goes, he's going to say, oh, that jerk is bad. No. When you gave him even that much, you think he's going to badmouth you? No. He will say only good things about you. So live according to the word. Live according to the word. Just live according to the word. That bad Mr. Kim? All of his friends are all bad people, I'm sure, because same flock together. All of his friends are the same kind. And they sit there and they say bad things about Mr. Kim and Mr. Che, but oh no, you don't know. Because if you truly know that person, you're not gonna you're not gonna say that. Why? Because he took the, the bigger bigger piece of gold. So until he dies, he's going to be your your advertising agent, advertising person. You're not gonna pay him anymore. This is how you live to give glory to God. This is how you live to give glory to God. Amen? Then there's no arguments all your life. Then he will be your advertising. He will advertise for you. Wherever you go, then people are going to really like you. So why don't you want to give glory to God? It's because you didn't know. Starting today, let's become a person to give glory to God, give joy to others, and give benefit to others. In all things, give joy and benefit to other people. And in the end, helping them to go to heaven. Let's say amen in Christ and giving glory to God. Starting today, this blessing is my blessing. This blessing is my children's blessing. Amen.
this person prayer God will listen why because God he gives glory to God let's cry to Lord three times let's receive blessings today let's, the promise of 66 six books of the Bible let's make it ours and our children Chuyo 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 Father God you said whether we eat or drink give glory to you Father Help us to give glory to you. In all things that we do, let us give glory to you, Father. Help us to share joy. In all things, help us to give benefit to other people. Help them to be saved and, and walk down the path together and help us to live a glory, give, giving glory to you, Father. Oh, Lord, thank you. Oh, Lord, thank you. Father, up until now, I did not give glory to you. Father, our church did not give glory to you. So that we didn't give joy and we did not give benefit to others. But that today, help us to thoroughly repent that. Lord, we cannot do anything on our own. Only through Christ, only through grace, when we do force of repentance, only when we say amen in Christ, that we, it can happen. Help us to receive all the promise, Father. Lord, who are we looking at right now? What is our goal, Father? How, how am I living right now? Help us go in Christ. Help us to say Amen.